Kia ora team, so today we're going to calculate angular velocity. Um, so here we have our formula for angular velocity. Um, so if we just have a look at the symbols here, um, so over here we have our symbol for angular velocity. Um, over here, angular displacement, and over here our time. So the formula reads, um, angular velocity is equal to the change in angular displacement divided by the change in time. Okay, just to remind ourselves, change in, the way we can work it out is our final minus our initial. Okay, so if we get a question that states calculate the angular velocity of a pendulum that moves from 30 degrees to 75 degrees between 2.19 seconds and 2.25 seconds. So what are we going to do? Well, if we put down our formula here. Yeah, what we can do is identify our final and initial angular displacements. So our final angular displacement is going to be 75. And we are going to minus it from our initial displacement, which is 30. And then we're going to do the same for our time, so our final time, 2.25, minus our initial time of 2.19. So this is going to give us 45 divided by 0 0.06. And then so we are going to get a final angular velocity of 700 and 50, and that's degrees per second. Kia ora team, so what we're going to look at now is how to work out angular acceleration. Okay, so um, over here we have our formula for angular acceleration. Um, so angular acceleration is equal to the change in angular velocity divided by our change in time. Again, if we remember, our change in means final minus initial. Okay, so if we get a, um, a question that states, what is the angular acceleration of an object which was rotating at 100 degrees per second at 2.19 seconds and then at 700 degrees per second at 2.25 seconds? What are we going to do? So, first off, we'll jot down our equation. So our angular acceleration is equal to our change in angular velocity divided by our change in time. All right, so a change in our final minus our initial. Okay, so our final angular velocity is going to be 700 degrees per second. 700 minus our initial, which is 100, divided by our change in time. So our final time was 2.25 minus our initial time, 2.19. So then we can work this out. So we have 600 divided by 0 0.06 and this is going to give us an answer of 10,000 degrees per second squared. Kia ora team, um, so we're going to look at how to calculate uh, tangential velocity. So here we have our formula, so Tangential velocity is equal to angular velocity times our radius of rotation. Okay, so if we get a question that states, calculate the tangential velocity of a hammer at the instant of release when the angular velocity is 750 degrees per second and the radius of rotation is 1.15 meters. 
Okay, so first thing we're going to do is write down our formula. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is remember that when we're dealing with tangential velocity, we need to make sure our angular velocity is in radians per second and not degrees per second. Okay, so if we have a look at our equation here, we can see that we give an angular velocity, but it's in degrees per second. Okay, so how can we convert it from degrees uh, per second to radians per second? Well, we can use this nice formula over here, uh, which says we take whatever we're given as our degrees per second um, for our angular velocity and divide it by 57.296. Okay, so let's do that now. So over here we are given 750 degrees per second. And we are going to divide that by 57.296. And this is going to give us 13.09. And now we have radians per second. Great, so now that we've converted our angular velocity from degrees per second to radians per second, we can take this number here and input it into our formula. So 13.09 times our radius of rotation, which is 1.15 which gives us an answer of 15.05 and that's in meters per second. Good team, so we are going to look at how to calculate uh, moments. Um, so our formula is moment is equal to force times distance. Okay, so if we get a question that states Calculate the moment arm for an athlete performing a leg extension with a load of 1,100 newtons and a distance between knee and cuff of 0.4 meters before the concentric phase. Okay, so uh, to calculate the moment, we are going to write down our formula. So force times distance. So our force is going to be 1,100, there we go, so from our load there, and our distance, 0 0.4, and so this is going to give us 440, and our units for moment is Newton meters.